Hey y'all, how y'all doing? So Martel had an interview, okay, with a content creator by the name of Eric K. Thomas. Uh, his channel is called The Quintessential Gentleman. I'm going to put the link to the interview up under this video in my pinned comment section, okay, for those of you who haven't seen it yet and would like to. Now, we all heard that Martel was trying to go around charging folks like $3,000 for an interview with him. I have no idea why he thinks somebody would pay that amount of money just to hear him lie. Because we all know that that's what the fuck he's going to do, because usually that's what he does. He lying just about every time he opened his mouth, in my opinion. So I'm wondering if this up and coming content creator paid him the $3,000 or if Martel gave him some kind of a discount or allowed him to pay him a little something in food stamps. You know, it's not like Martel can't use it, in my opinion. But let's get into this interview, y'all. So Eric asked Martel, what can the fans expect from the new season? And I was like, bullshit. Nothing but bullshit, but Martel told him that the fans have always received an organic great show with castmates that are genuine, who gives them things that they can, you know, walk away with and use, you know, for their own daily lives. That in itself was a lie, because what exactly have we been given other than a front row seat to fuck shit? And it has drawn many viewers in, in my opinion, because some of the shit that we have seen and heard is just unfucking believable. He kept swinging in his chair like, so you know he was about to spew nothing but bullshit. One thing he said that I feel like has some truth to it, though, is that he gives the people all of him. And that he does. But the thing is, don't nobody want it. Not even his wife, which is why she divorced his ass. Something that, you know, he refuses to accept. Which is why we have seen the bullshit play out on screen. Because she left him. And he refuses to accept it. So he does stupid shit to cause chaos that only makes him look bad and is the number one reason why he couldn't sell a motherfucker ink pen because nobody likes him. The show has definitely put Huntsville on a map, like he said, but there's nothing but fuck niggas who live there. In my opinion, with Martel, Maurice, and Marceau being the ringleaders. You know what I'm saying? And um, he kept saying that the show gives organic footage. I was like, ain't nothing organic about your ass, not even the food you eat. Because last time I heard, you eat ass. And the ass that you've been eating was paid for, so they say, allegedly. So it's like, you know, the interview is going to be just like the other ones, full of lies. So the guy asked him, he, uh, Eric asked Martel why he thought that Huntsville was the perfect city. Okay, for Love and Marriage Huntsville. And Martel goes, well, this is my city. I was like, just because you don't live in about every last single fucking project in Huntsville, it don't make Huntsville your city. But okay, that's his problem. He think he owns everything. He think he owns, you know, the city, his ex-wife, that wine, his kids, Mel's furs. He don't own shit. Not even the fact that he destroyed his marriage. Not even those teeth in his mouth. In my opinion. But anyway, he said that Huntsville was his city where he was born and raised and he ain't never leaving. I was like, you ain't never lied. You ain't leaving because you can't. Flights cost money. You know what I'm saying? And being that the little bit you get from own is spent on tight clothes, hoes, and pop ass, that sound about right. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to have your ass right here in Huntsville while you watching your ex-wife travel to places your ass can't even pronounce. We already know he can't spell them, but I'm going to take it a step further. Can't even pronounce the motherfuckers either. He tried to say he would travel all over the world, but he ain't leaving Huntsville. I was like, unless Mel left, okay? Unless she left. Because we all know that you want to be wherever she is. And if you can drive there, I'm sure your ass will follow her wherever she went. So he started talking about the good thing about the city, you know, the good things about the city and saying how, you know, big companies are migrating there and how a few years ago it lacked entertainment. I guess he feel like Huntsville is entertaining the people and it is, but unfortunately it's a circus, you know, not a good look for people who are supposed to be business people, main shit, but clowns. The name of the show is love and marriage. And, you know, I ain't seen no love in none of the marriages. The niggas ain't shit, okay, with the exception of Lewis. Time will tell if he one of them. But as for right now, he ain't in the same boat as the others, okay? I'm not going to put him there. Then Martel goes on to say that Huntsville is an amazing city to raise a family and grow a company. I guess it's also a place where you can lose a family and a company. He's managed to do both. You know what I'm saying? 
and he was sitting up there smiling while saying it was his city but i'm sure the city would prefer that he lie and say that he from texas or somewhere anywhere but huntsville not a good representation at all okay so y'all eric asked him he asked martel what he learned about himself while working on the show martel tells him that he's on tv by default he went into talking about how male you know who was his wife at the time always wanted to be on tv or whatever um and what else did he say yeah oh and martel wanted uh the people to know that him and Mel is working on their relationship and i was like y'all ain't working on shit she in a relationship with a whole new person and you over there faking a relationship with Sheree. The only ship y'all may be working on is the co-parenting ship and that would only be by force of a judge, okay? But of course, he wanted the people to think it was something that it wasn't, in my opinion. So he said that Mel, um, let's get back into what he was saying. He, he said that Mel always wanted to be on TV and tried to make it seem like he was the one that you know, work to make that happen. You know how he always like to take credit for, you know, other people's success when he himself ain't even successful. You know what I'm saying? Make it make sense. But he said that the show has, you know, had its up, uh, ups and downs. I would say more downs than ups for him because the show exposed him for who he really was. Okay. It got to a point where he couldn't hide behind his wife anymore in those suits. You know what I'm saying? Then he wanted to blame the blogs for that shit. He said it's challenging when you're showing the world some, you know, showing the world some of your life and the blogs pick and choose what to put out there. And it's like you have shared your life on TV, yes, but the shit that you have shared has been fuck shit. So you can't get mad when the blogs talk about your fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you carried on a multi-year affair with someone uh you use as a weapon against your wife had a baby with her, then blame your wife for it. How the fuck is that our fault? You know what I'm saying? How the fuck is that anybody's fault but yours? He wanted to say that, you know, bloggers uh, fabricate shit for clicks and views. And I was like, no, that would be you. The shit we report on, you know, it ain't fabricated because the shit you do can't be made up. We can't make up you destroying your family for ass, pussy, and blowjobs. We can't make up the fact that you recorded your children to make, you know, their mama look bad. We can't make up that you call your wife a hoe on national TV when you was the one fucking around and making babies outside of the marriage. Did you or did you not do those things? Like, boy, bye. If anybody wanted clicks and views, it would be your ass when you got on IG and announced that your wife done pretty much fucked everybody but Arnold from different strokes. So I guess that means that at one point she was climbing on top of Dudley and Mr. Drummond, huh? Boy, bye. Y'all want to blame everybody but y'all self for the fuck shit that y'all do. But he said that, you know, throughout his journey he has enjoyed a little you know he has enjoyed a little bit or whatever i was like yeah the first few episodes where people was probably thinking you was a real man who valued family i'm sure you enjoyed that you know what i'm saying it wasn't fun no more when the people found out what you really was about he claims that a lot of growth has taken place but i was like where if anything in my opinion you've gotten worse so eric the interviewer you know um he was like, you're such a passionate father and the people done seen the co-parenting drama play out. So he asked Martel what he tell his children and if he have any regrets. I could have answered that for him. Okay. He tells his children that it's all their mama fault. When he introduced them to their other sibling. Okay. That he went out and uh, had with somebody else. He probably told them that Knox was their mama fault which is why he went against Mel's wishes, which was that she be present when he tell the kids about Knox. He didn't want her present because he knew that he was going to make that shit out to be her fault, in my opinion, because he is not capable of accepting accountability for any of the fuck shit that he does. I doubt if he regret having his kids on the show, though, because he has used them to make people think that he is the perfect dad when he is not. We the people could see right through that shit. Because a perfect dad wouldn't record his children being coerced into saying, you know, terrible things about their mama and then play it online for the world to hear. You know, a perfect father wouldn't subject his kids to a deadly virus just so he can go out and get a quick nut. 
But that was my response to the guy's question. Martel's response was, anytime it's dealing with children, it's a delicate subject. He said, if the show was dealing with strictly business, he would love for his kids to be on there. But when you have, a, you know, when you have to showcase your life on TV, uh, he would rather not have them on there. First of all, he think he's slick. He trying to act like it was a mutual agreement to keep the kids offline. What probably happened, in my opinion, is that after Martel got in his feelings because Mel wouldn't take him back after that Destin trip, he played a recording of Mariah saying, you know, disparaging things about her mother. He played that shit for the world to hear. And Mel probably ran that shit back to the judge and asked the judge to keep Martel from putting their kids online, which probably meant that she couldn't have them on there either, in my opinion. And, you know, he shouldn't want his kids online on TV because he's an embarrassment. You know what I'm saying? And plus, he don't want the kids to see him for what he really is, which is a fuck nigga in my opinion. But anyway, he said that the kids won't be filming anymore because it's an adult driven show and they should leave them off of there. Yeah, it's an adult driven show because it ain't nothing but holes on it. Thanks to you and your homeboys. In my opinion, the interviewer asked him what would be something about him that the fans would be surprised to learn. Something that they don't get to see. Martel said that it would be that he loves the outdoors, like hiking and fishing. I was like, okay, I can believe that. I mean, you have went hiking and fishing for ass, so I guess that would be accurate. He went into talking about, you know, the scene he had with his dad where, you know, he was fishing. Um, this nigga said that, you know, he likes to get dirty. I was like, you ain't never lied because, you know, it has been put out there that you eat ass and it gets no dirtier than that. But anyway, the interview then um, the interviewer then asked him if he ever felt like um, if he ever felt a burden to get it right, you know, being on a hit show like Love and Marriage Huntsville, you know, representing a black man. And I was like, when have he ever tried to get it right? I would say that you know the answer to that is no. Making black women into single mothers isn't trying to get it right. But Martel said that he wouldn't say burden, but he feel that they should put their best foot forward. So the question is, why haven't he done that? Why hasn't he done that? He said that if they uh, make mistakes along the way, people should understand that. But I say people understand that people make mistakes, but what these niggas call mistakes actually be choices. It's a choice to ruin your marriage when your wife done gave you five years to get your shit together. It's a choice when you not only cheat, but out here having unprotected sex that results in a baby. They give out condoms for free. You deciding to you know what I'm saying? Not use one is a choice, not a mistake. Martel feel like when you're trying to get to the next level, you're going to make mistakes. And that's true. But what level are you trying to get to that requires you to leave out of the house telling your wife, you know, you're going to the gym only to end up at a hose house eating ass? So Martel went on to say that you can't let what people say and do dictate your life and started talking about how the blogs be tearing his ass up. But the blogs be tearing his ass up because he see no wrong in the shit that he does. He see no wrong in the shit that he be out here doing. So the blogs just be out here trying to get him to see like, dude, you're wrong. He said that the blogs had Mel calling him up, asking him if he was suing her for defamation. So according to him, Mel called him up and asked him that. Now, I remember doing a video on, um, you know, him uh, possibly suing her for defamation because I had gotten wind of that rumor as well as the other uh, content creators and if i'm not sure about something i always say that but my thing is even though people didn't know for sure if it was true they reported on it because it sounds like something martel would do i mean if he's suing her for her kids he would sue her for defamation in my opinion anything for a check because we all know he don't want to work at least not too hard my commentary on that was on a just in case basis you know what i'm saying like I know your ass ain't suing for defamation when you and your baby mama was out here calling her a hoe. But he was acting like, you know, it wasn't true. You know, um, he was acting like he's not suing male for defamation. So it's like, whatever. I guess we'll have to wait and see because I don't believe anything that comes out of his mouth. Okay. It's full of shit. Literally. But anyway, for entertainment purposes, Martel claims that he's working diligently to get back tight with Mel. My thing is, how the fuck do he expect her to trust him when whenever she tries to be cool with him, he fucks that up? Just like when she allowed him to go on um, 
to Destin or whatever. Why he had to run back to his baby mama telling her shit when he knows what she does with any information given to her about Mel. You know what I'm saying? He was being a little messy woman. He wanted to get back in his baby mama's bed, in my opinion, because, you know, he knows that she was pissed about him going on that trip with Mel, in my opinion. He has proven himself to be not trustworthy, okay? Over and over again, he does and says what he feels he needs to, to get what he wants. And then when he doesn't get it, he goes back to being who he really is. Furthermore, he's not working diligently to get back tight with Mel, like in a uh, friendship or co-parenting kind of way. In my opinion, he's working diligently to get back with Mel, like in a relationship. It doesn't matter that she's with someone else because he feel like she's still going to take him back, in my opinion. And I've said this several times before. How can he be out here doing what he's doing, trying to take her kids away and shit like that and everything else and still think that somebody about to take his ass back? What effort has he made to be a better person? You know what I'm saying? And the more uh, Mel reject him, the worse he's going to get with his shenanigans, in my opinion. He mentioned that Mel called him. And I'm like, okay, well, they're on speaking terms, I guess, and they're filming together. So maybe she did call him. But we all know that when they cool, it doesn't last. So when things blow up again this time around, I'm sure he's going to do something a little more stupider than he's already done, which means that Mel should consider getting security. So y'all, he got back to talking shit about the blogger saying how they basically, you know, made up the jail situation a few weeks ago saying that he went to jail. He was like, I filmed that day, then had a meeting with my clothier. So that right there just confirms in my opinion that he is trying to start an underwear line. I'm wondering if socks going to come with the underwear for those who are lacking down there. Okay. But anyway, he was like, I was filming that day. Then I met with my clothier and then some friends. And then one of my friends called me telling me that, you know, uh, folk, you know, folks were saying that I was in jail. I was like, I don't give a fuck what he says. The people down at the jail ain't going to lie and say you were there and you wasn't. If he really wasn't down in the holding cell, like they said that he was, he could have gotten online to debunk that rumor, but instead he waited until that morning, a few hours after it was said that he was released. So it's like boy bye talking about bloggers make shit up. Sometimes they do, but when it comes to you, sir, they don't have to make up shit because can't nobody make up the shit that you do, period. Plus your baby mama face was big. So unless she had an allergic reaction to you filming another season without her, we the people believe that you most likely most definitely laid hands on her, in my opinion. And she didn't press charges that, you know what I'm saying? Because that would have probably gotten your ass removed from the show, the show that feeds her and y'all baby. Okay. And this is just in my opinion. So him sitting up there in that interview saying that he ain't never hitting no woman, it means nothing. Him saying that he ain't uh, going to never be in jail. It means nothing, especially when he knows that people will save him. I heard he had friends on the, you know, police force or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Plus he has control over his baby mama. Plus he went to jail for the ATM shit. There's actually a mug shot. So how you saying you ain't going to jail when your ass done already been there, in my opinion. Then an interviewer asked Martel about sustainability. Like how much can he take? Did he see himself being able to still showcase his life? Martel said he would take the world on. He don't let a lot of stuff get to him. He claims, you know, he has tough skin and that he's happy and fulfilled. And that in itself was a lie because happy people don't do the shit that he does. Only miserable people do that shit. He claims that he's been through a lot and ain't on drugs or alcohol and he can withstand anything. Then he said, you know, he going to be on the show forever as long as own have him. I was like, first of all, nothing lasts forever, especially you on a show where 99.9999999% of the viewers don't like your ass. Carlos may want to see you, but the other folks don't. It's actually, you know, been a petition going around to get your ass up off the show. But, you know, whatever. When it comes to how he feels about Carlos, he said that he felt like Carlos did a good job putting people in a position to put forth a good show. He said that him and Carlos have conversations regularly, okay? Y'all, Martel claims that Carlos asked them back when they met him, him and Mel, if they wanted to do Real Housewives of Atlanta, since that was a show that he was producing at the time. He said that he told Carlos no because he wanted to keep his wife. 
because everybody on the show was having relationship issues. I was like, and so were you. The only difference is that you and Mel was having y'all relationship issues behind closed doors until she exposed your ass. And how the fuck can he say he wanted to keep his wife but refused to stop fucking the girl, you know what I'm saying, that he now has a baby with? The baby that pretty much put an end to his marriage. Make it make sense. He was cheating before love and marriage Huntsville even became a thing. In my opinion, he knew that he was cheating and would be exposed. Had he went onto the Real Housewives of Atlanta, not knowing that his ass was going to be exposed anyway. So y'all, the interviewer then asked him if he felt that reality TV pretty much makes situations worse. And because Martel would rather blame any and everything and everybody but himself for his fuck ups. Okay. He was like, of course it do. Let Martel tell it. Mail, reality TV, and the blogs are the problem. He's never the problem. He's never the reason for anything with his stupid ass. That's exactly why he's in a position that he's in right now because he can't take accountability for shit. It's always everybody else's fault. Big dummy. Reality TV didn't make him cheat. He was doing that shit before he even came on to TV. But then in the same breath, y'all, he said TV can't make you get a divorce. It's like, shut up. He said, TV can't make you get a divorce, but when you surround yourself with people, you start doing things, you know, like them and moving like them. And there he was again, blaming Marceau and Maurice, okay, for him cheating like he did in season one. It's everybody's fault for him cheating except his. I don't give a fuck who you're around. You ain't got to do nothing that the next person do, especially if you love, respect, and value your marriage. Now, as you can see, they still got their wives while your ass... You know what I'm saying? Your wife is probably getting banged out right now by the man that she found. Thanks to you fucking up. Accountability will get you far. If you steady going around blaming everybody else, including your wife, for you sticking your dick in somebody that wasn't your wife. If you don't see the wrong in that, in what you did and feel like there's an excuse for that shit, how is she supposed to trust you and believe that you won't do it again? She can't. And that's why she left your ass. So the interviewer was like, I know you're out here looking for a love. So, you know, um, tell me what kind of work you've done on yourself to open yourself up for love again. I was like, absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because had he done some work on himself, I believe that Mel would have took his ass back. She didn't want to leave in the first place. It took her, what, five years to do it? You know what I'm saying? Had he done some work on himself, I truly believe that Mel would have took his ass back. And I wouldn't have been mad because that was her husband, the father of her kids. You know what I'm saying? They had businesses together. Um, I'm sure she loved them. Okay. And, a, you know, plus a divorce, it hurts the kids just like it does the grownups in this, you know, in the situation. So I was hoping that they were able to stay together actually, but he refused to do right. Thinking that she was going to continue to put up with it. He wasn't expecting her to leave because she had put up with it for so long. And he knew that she wanted her family. It was all good and fun while she was, you know, in the closet crying. Now who's crying? Even if it's on the inside, who's crying now? His ass probably in the closet now with his thumb in his mouth, talking like old girl, you know, from that movie, um, Beloved, talking about some touch me on the inside part. Like, nigga, she ain't about to touch you on no part no more. She gone. So y'all, Martel said that he's in counseling. Now, he probably left out that the counseling was ordered by a judge, in my opinion, okay? Which would be the reason that him and Mel would be seeing the same counselor, because I'm sure that Mel wouldn't want to see the same one as him, you know what I'm saying, willingly. I did a video on that a few months ago about how Martel was seeing the same counselor as Mel, and she was taking, the, the counselor was taking selfies with uh, Martel and shit. Plus, it ain't like, you know, he did it on his own. He's not a fan of counseling. He don't want to face the truth. The judge probably, you know, have no plans on giving him custody. So ordered them to see that counsel so that they can co-parent more successfully. OK, but Martel probably looking at this like, OK, me going to counseling is what's going to get me my wife back. And I say maybe three years ago, but you spent these past three years of your divorce pretty much trying to convince the world that the woman you want back was a low down, dirty whore who didn't give a fuck about her kids and left them with pretty much anybody, including the mailman. OK, the damage is done, in my opinion. And it's like she knows how you move. You will pretend like you're, you know, this changed guy. And then when you don't get what you want, you write back to being who you really are. 
he going into, you know, this counseling, in my opinion, thinking he's going to get mail back. And I doubt if that's the case. You know what I'm saying? At least that's how I feel like he's, that's, that's what I believe he's thinking. And watch what I tell you. If Martel go through this counseling and realize that Mel still ain't going to take his ass back, it's going to be another shit show. Worse than before, in my opinion. That nigga had a mental breakdown on IG, in my opinion, because Mel wouldn't take him back, you know, after that Destin trip. I feel like Mel, you know, she be enjoying rejecting him. And I get it because there you have a nigga that done shitted on her, okay? Had the nerve to fix his mouth to say another bitch was satisfying him. And here he is begging her to take him back. I've been there before. And I used to take pleasure in knowing that my ex wanted me back, but couldn't have me. But in Mel's case, Martel done lost everything. And you can't underestimate a nigga like that. Some niggas can't handle you seeing uh, you live life without them. You know what I'm saying? Even though when you tried to live it with them, they were doing other things. But anyway, Martel says that... Uh, him and Mel and the kids, they see the same counselor, but individually, okay? He claims that he's an open book. I was like an open book of lies, which is why, you know, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna never get nowhere because he can't be honest. I feel like he gonna try to make the counselor think that he's not as bad as Mel said that he is so she can go back and give Mel and the judge good reports about his ass. I feel like he's gonna definitely try to manipulate the situation. He already done did that in my opinion, you know? posing for her posing with the counselor for a picture or whatever when he realized that Mel ain't gonna take him back <coughs> excuse me he just may decide you know he just may um decide to um try to date the counselor to fuck with Mel. i wouldn't be surprised okay and i wouldn't be surprised if the counselor is a pick me but anyway y'all the counselor's office he said that it's a no judgment zone for him okay he says that he lays everything out on the table and um, he claims that he's becoming a better husband. No, he says he claims that he's becoming a, a better father and a better person and a better future husband or whatever. I was like, oh, yeah, you becoming all of that in such a short amount of time, huh? Boy, bye. Hopefully that's the end result. But a nigga got work to do, in my opinion. That shit ain't going to happen overnight. If it happens at all. I hope the counselor is teaching his ass how to accept the word no. Because from the look of that trailer, he needs some help with that. Martel claims that he's looking forward to being married again because he loves being married. My thing is, you couldn't have loved it that much because you pretty much forfeited your family for somebody you didn't even want to be with. Because if you wanted to be with her, you would be with her and in a way that counts, not just in bed. How can you say you love being married to someone you deeply love and someone you could build longevity with when you forfeited your wife for 14 years, the mother of your kids, for a random chick who you met at a fucking college party or a barbecue or whatever the fuck it was? You can say Mel told you to get a girlfriend all you want, but I'm sure that she told your ass other things too. But you decided to pick and choose what to listen to. So you decided to go out and get a girlfriend, but look what it cost you. Look what being stupid costs you. Mel left you, you know what I'm saying, to get your dick stuck whenever you wanted it to since you said that she wasn't satisfying you. And here you are three years later, still trying to get back with the woman you said didn't satisfy you. The interviewer, his last question for Martel, I think was, what um, does he hope the fans take away from the new season that's coming up? Martel said that he wanted the fans to just jump in and grab a hold of something. I was like, bet, we're going to try to reach through the screen and grab a hold of Stormy ass because it's ladies first. Stop the shit out of her, then reach back for your ass and pop the shit out of you. And that would be for baby Ace because I'm sure he didn't appreciate you stepping to his mama. Okay, punk. But anyway, y'all, Martel O'Lion ass said that, you know, um, the cast was going to be giving the fans everything that life would give you. And I was like, and what's that? A box of chocolates for us? Then he said he wants his fans to allow the show to help them with their relationships with their spouse and children, friends, and whatever else. And I was like, that show can't help the fans do shit but develop high blood pressure because the motherfuckers on it damn sure know how to piss a motherfucker off. Okay? Anyway, he claims that the season is going to be fun. Okay? And he was talking about how the people was going to see a new face. I take it that he was talking about Sheree's face. Too bad it ain't the face people want to see. Y'all, he claimed that he haven't watched Love and Marriage Huntsville since season one. He said he only watched the first 
uh, for episodes. Sound familiar? But anyway, y'all, the interviewer is going to say, well, don't make too much money for these blogs or something like that. In other words, I believe he was trying to say, don't be doing shit on the show this season to have the blogs talking and making all that money. Then, y'all, Martel had the nerve to say that he got a lawyer for the bloggers. <laughs> I'm like, and who's your lawyer? Maurice? Boy, bye. Nigga, we going to get Maxine Shaw for your ass because you, ma'am, has caused us mental anguish. You talking about your attorney, you know, talking about... um. He going to get his attorney on the blogs or whatever. I was like, nigga, please better go sit your ass down somewhere and save that money to buy your ass some groceries so you can stop eating these kids' Lunchables because that shit is unethical. Going to take the meat and cheese out there and cover it back up so they can discover that it's only crackers left old trifling ass. But anyway, y'all, Martel said that he got to put a stop to the bloggers making up shit. And that in itself was a joke because one of the people that allegedly discovered that he was being held in a holding cell was an attorney. So it's like, stop it already. He the queen of making up shit, especially about male, but call himself getting a lawyer talking about somebody making shit up on him. And it's like, girl, bye. Girl, go sit your ass down or get knocked out like your father used to. Y'all, ain't nobody got time for this shit. A certified clown to the hundredth power. But yeah, y'all, Martel Goofy ass said that he got to put a stop to the bloggers as if anybody got to make up shit when it comes to him. And y'all, he so motherfucking stupid. He told on himself and tried to clean that shit up. Like, you can't make this shit up. He said that he got to make another lie to say that um, he's not suing Mel and that he didn't go to jail again because the people keep saying it. Then he realized that he said he didn't go to jail again admitting that he went the first time for the atms in my opinion then he tried to clean his shit up like nigga the mug shot is out they're not gonna take no mug shot unless your walkie talkie having ass was arrested so stop the bullshit motherfuckers was reading out your charges and everything like who is you playing with play with yourself because you can't play with us he mad because we don't believe his stupid ass when he got on that lab with his baby mama. Niggas like him think, you know, they're so smart and be the dumbest. He has got to be the dumbest. But I'm about to let y'all hear it. Just listen. Yeah, it's good. Awesome. All right. We're going to try to keep them. Um, we gonna, hopefully you don't uh, get too many. Don't and, um, make too much money for these blogs this time around. But Oh, oh my God. Listen, listen, listen. I gotta put a stop to them because they, because them making up stuff, it's horrible, man. <laughs> no, it is because, like, listen, this morning I told myself, I said, I gotta, because I got my attorney on that stuff. But, but anyway, aside from that, I'm like, I gotta do another live, let them know that um, I'm not suing Melody. I'm not, I didn't go to jail again. Not, not again, but I'm saying, I gotta tell them again that I didn't go to jail because I already I addressed it last week. But they still running with it this week. I said, God, no. <laughs> do, you, so. do you find yourself feeling like you have to address things all the time? Or do you feel like there's certain things that you need to definitely kind of have conversations about? Yes, yes, yes. So t- typically, I don't address anything. Typically, I don't address anything. But when they when they come out and really assassinate my character like this, it's almost like, man, I'd be a fool to not protect myself. Just fucking retarded in my opinion. But anyway, let me continue because I want to hurry up and get done talking about this nigga. So the guy asked him if he found himself having to address things a lot. And y'all, Martel said that typically he don't address anything. But when they assassinate his character like this, meaning the bloggers, he would be a fool not to protect himself. And it's like, first of all, your character was assassinated when they found you hiding out with a motherfucking walkie talkie getting ready to rob the ATM, in my opinion. Your character was assassinated then, and you was probably going to be next. Your character was assassinated when we found out that your ass was sneaking out of the house in the middle of a deadly pandemic. You know what I'm saying? For a quick fuck, endangering the lives of not only your wife, but your children, including your brand new baby. And as for protection, as far as protection, I was like, girl, had you protected yourself in the way that you needed to, you might still have your wife. 
You want to protect yourself now, a whole baby later? Girl, bye. Y'all, he said he got onto social media late in life. I was like, you ain't had no choice because that's when social media came about. But anyway, later in life. And social media ain't the only thing you've gotten into late in life. In my opinion, I would be willing to bet that reading is somewhere on that list. And you still ain't mastered that shit yet, in my opinion. Like spell dog. Never mind. Girl, I ain't got time for that shit. I do not have time for that shit. Y'all, Martel said that he has always been the quiet person behind the scenes, never wanting to be out front. And I was like, that's because you always been doing dirt and you like to keep your dirt behind closed doors. (coughs) Excuse me, which is why your ass was mad when Mel exposed you. He was like, you can go on my page. I don't even post for real, for real. I was like, we know. The only time you post is when you done conjured up another lie about your ex-wife or trying to make folks think that you the world's greatest father. This nigga said that you have to address things when it comes to your character because it hurts business and it hurts relationships. And I'm just like, if your ass didn't go to jail for real, how is it hurting your relationship, especially a relationship that your ass only in for a storyline? Make it make sense. And what business? Sugar mama got more business than you, which is why you probably had Peggy try to shut her down. Tried to shut your own daughter shit down, in my opinion. Boy, this interview was comical. Comical. He said a million people probably think that he done been to jail and hit his baby mama. And I was like, child, they don't think. They know it, in my opinion. But go off, Majorette. March on with your woe is me narrative. Good luck getting the people to believe that shit. Ain't nobody falling for that shit but your mama. And I think Marlene will believe whatever you want her to believe as long as you give her a bottle of wine for her troubles. I can imagine her ass in the middle of the street while it's raining talking about some 13.5. I'm alive. Shit, her liver probably sitting there like, not really, but go off, sis. But anyway, this nigga said that he don't hit nobody and don't go to jail. And that he would be devastated if he went to jail. And I was like, I guess you devastated then. So the interviewer then says that the media kind of perpetuates that type of stereotype about the black man going to jail. I was like, sir, don't do it. The media ain't got to perpetuate shit when it comes to Martel. So Martel said, why would they make up a story like that knowing that it's damaging? I was like, you know what's damaging? You know what's damaging? Some people wake up to folders in their cup. In your kid's case, they woke up to a whole new fucking sibling who's allowed to walk on their head while they sleep. That's damaging, okay? Like enough of the bullshit. Martel wants the bloggers to get up off his ass, okay? And it ain't gonna happen. He also knows, okay, about the petition that's going around. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, to get his goofy ass up off the show. I'm like, nigga, fuck you and your bubblegum machine ass lawyers okay that interviewer gonna tell him that we look forward to seeing him on the screen i said speak for your motherfucking self boy bye and that was that for the episode y'all i really do hope that that man didn't pay martel no three thousand dollars for that interview because everything he said in it was some fabricated bullshit you know what i'm saying you know uh this the the content creator he may generate some new subscribers and views because i'm gonna send y'all over there to watch the interview but martel he ain't worth no three thousand dollars y'all i'm out of here i hope y'all enjoyed my recap of that bullshit ass interview all right y'all take care and i'll chat with y'all in the next one